I've seen quite a few cartridges introduced over the years, but I've never seen a cartridge explode in popularity like 6.5 Creepor. And I'm really trying to figure out why. And I say that, first of all, I think it's a great cartridge. But this is the third intermediate range 6.5 millimeter cartridge introduced. All ballistically identical. Fourth, if you want to count the 6.5 by 5.7. So why did none of the others catch on, at least here in the United States, but this one just exploded in popularity? Well, I don't think it's technology changed. I think it's we changed. Again, I do think the 6.5 Creedmoor is a great cartridge and it has a lot of great attributes for it. It is low recoil. The bullets do have a high ballistic coefficient. It's got great sectional density, which means great penetration on game animals. Great hunting cartridge. All right, so lots of positive attributes for the cartridge. It's just nothing new. 6.5 by 5.5, it came out in 1894, and they're ballistically identical. And when I say ballistically identical, okay, seller and bellet, it was available. 140 grain, 6.5 Creedmoor, muzzle velocity, 2,658 feet per second. Norma, 6.5 by 5.5, 140 grain, muzzle velocity. 2,690 feet per second. So slightly faster for the 6.5 by 5.5, which I know there are weaker loadings in the 6.5 by 5.5 than the storm loading. I know there are hotter loadings for the 140 grain and 6.5 more than the cellar and bellet here. Point is they're ballistically identical. Same, the exact same bullet. Okay, so that, you know, my confusion there and how, how do we go from the 6.5 by 5.5 being around for 130 years? So this was out the same year 3030 Winchester came out, or at least Model 94. This was out, what, 12 years before 30 out 6, 30 years before the 270 Winchester. All right, so it, it has a history. Great cartridge then, great cartridge now, but it's never caught on. At least here in the U.S. Okay, and then Sweden and Norway extremely popular, which this was their standard issue service cartridge. And this was developed in a joint effort between Sweden and Norway. All right, so I don't know why it was always called a 6.5 by 5.5 Swede here, but it was. But it's joint effort between Sweden and Norway, kind of like Norma Ammunition, which was literally, this is what they produced when they started in 1902, lots of 6.5 by 5 fives. And it was started in Sweden by three Norwegian brothers, to an effort. So I get this being exceptionally popular in Sweden and Norway, their standard service issue cartridge. Every country, their standard issue service cartridge is extremely popular with all the civilian shooters. 30 out 6 and 308 here in the U.S., 303 British and the Commonwealth nations, 8 millimeter Mauser in Germany, and so on and so on. But this one never caught on here in the United States, and this one just absolutely exploded in popularity. So how did we go from here in the U.S., 6.5 by 5.5, five, five, uh, it's okay cartridge, to, ooh, 6.5 Creedmoor. It's the most technologically advanced cartridge ever. It's the super cartridge. Greatest thing since sliced bread. And technologically advanced. I mean, seriously? In 1894, maybe, but... All right, that's the part I'm confused by. All right, now, there is a criticism a lot of people have of the 6.5 by 5.5, and that's it's too long. Okay, I don't know why long cartridges are... So cartridges are suddenly, I don't like that. When did something been too long become a problem? Anyway, okay. Okay, legitimate concern there though. If, if you're just determined you gotta shoot short rifles and it's gotta fit in short magazines. But keep in mind 6.5 by 5.5 was developed back when they designed the cartridge and the rifle simultaneously. So the cartridge 
the rifle was made to fit the cartridge they needed. Whereas today, it's, they've got the pre-existing AR length, short action length magazines, ARTNs, and now they're just trying to figure out what kind of cartridge can they squeeze in there, rather than designing the magazine and rifle to fit what they need for the cartridge. But anyway, okay, so legitimate concern for some people. Well, that's why they came out 260 Remington, and again, virtually identical to these. It's 308 case, so existing case, neck down to 6.5 millimeters, so would work with all the existing short action magazines. It came out in 1990, and after some morally questionable stuff with Sammy, it was released as the 260 Remington. It was popular for target shooting, and it, it was developing a following in the hunting community, because it is a good cartridge, all of them are. But it, it didn't explode in popularity, okay? And 6.5 crew more does have a slight advantage on the 260 Remington with the heavier bullets. All right, if, if we look really close at these, they're, they're the exact same length, overall length. Right, but from the rim to the shoulder, it's a shorter distance on the 6.5 crew more, which makes the neck a little bit longer. And if we look at these two bullets right here, side by side, okay, it, Imagine the bullets are the same length. Well, you can see how a longer bullet would sit further in the case on the 260 Remington, which that would cut into the powder capacity a little bit. All right, that's, that's the only difference, though. Right, which ain't much of a difference, and it must have not been too much of a problem because Sergeant Sherry Gallagher used the 260 Remington to win the 2010 NRA high power championship, national championship, 260 Remington, three years after the 6.5 Creedmoor came out. And as far as the neck and shoulder and all that, if we hold these two, the 6.5 by 5.5 five and the Creedmoor side by side, that neck looks almost identical to me. So they had it right all along on the 6.5 by 5.5, five, 130 years ago. Again, 6.5 Creedmoor just took off popularity. And it is a target cartridge. Okay, one of the things they did when they shortened it, in order to get the powder capacity up, or as high as they could since they made the case shorter, they got rid of almost all of the taper, okay, in the case. So it's not sloped like this 6.5 by 5.5 five here, a lot of slope. Okay, well, well this is a pure target cartridge. And a, for a battle rifle in harsh conditions, battlefield conditions, and Arctic conditions, the 6.5 by 5.5 five five is gonna have more reliable feeding and ejection. That's what you get with a longer case with a lot of taper to it. It's more reliable in bad conditions. This case isn't gonna stick as easy. I, I can see that making a difference, especially in Arctic conditions, battlefield conditions. It's not an issue at the range. Okay, and the 260 Remington, it's going to be a little bit more reliable than the 6.5 crew more for extraction and feeding because it's based on the 308 case, which was made for a battle rifle. So with all that said, I think the reason the 6.5 Creedmoor became so popular, exploded in popularity, I think it's because we changed. Our culture changed. Right now, I'd say target shooting is much more popular than hunting. Okay, well, it makes sense then that a cartridge designed purely for target shooting would become popular, extremely popular, at a time when that's what more people are doing, is target shooting. Okay, and Nothing new about that either, by the way. The Creedmoor Range, the historic Creedmoor Range, where they had the first Creedmoor matches, our first national matches in the U.S. The matches that this was named in honor of. Okay, that first match, they were shooting a thousand yards, 
Nothing new about long range precision, except for they were doing it with black powder. There were over 10,000 spectators there to watch that first match. Target shooting became extremely popular then. And I would say in large part because big game populations had been decimated in the eastern United States by that time. And keep in mind, it's right after the Civil War, so anything that moved got shot and eaten. So target shooting became extremely popular, so just like now. Okay, so yeah, that, for me that kind of explains it. Cartridge designed for target shooting would be extremely popular now. Okay, and with that said, I know I have a hard time changing with the times. As my friend Joey likes to say, I'm a dinosaur. So, I found our next project rifle. I picked it up recently. Chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm modernizing here. And... Got us a target rifle. <laughs> Seemed appropriate to get a target rifle chambered in a target cartridge. And this rifle here, this rifle, well, this is, it has a little history to it. This was one of the most important rifles ever designed, ever created here in the United States. And it made a name for itself at long range precision shooting matches, just like the Creedmoor matches. So yeah, this is going to be our next project rifle, but we will talk about this later. I've got to order a few things before we can jump into this one. I think it's going to be a fun one. And while I'm ordering stuff, I'm probably going to take a few weeks off here. I'm getting ready to go fishing. Okay, so I'm going to take a few weeks off get some fishing in, and then when I get back, we're gonna jump into this one. So that's what we're jumping into as soon as I get back in a few weeks from fishing. Okay, But one last thing I did wanna mention. Okay, I don't know how many of you heard about the Silicon Valley Bank going insolvent this past Friday. A lot of you probably haven't heard about it, but I'm guessing you're gonna hear about it this coming week. That's one of those things that it might be nothing and after this week you don't hear any more about it. Or that might have been a really big deal. That could have been our Lehman Brothers of 2008 event. All right, that 16th largest bank in the country just went insolvent. That could be a big deal. So keep an eye out on that. Let's keep up with what's going on with the banks. Be listening. And I would suggest everybody make sure you've got some cash on hand right now. Just in case, I'm not saying anything's gonna happen, but that's throwing out some little advice there. Okay, God bless and have a great day.